We can keep pouring gas on the flames, but it's going to hurt all of our bottom lines as we destroy the things that made this area valuable in the first place. Many residents of St. John's County came out to speak against a new development that would bring more than 750 age-restricted single-family homes to nearly 600 acres on the south side of Greenbrier Road. Let's hear more of what they had to say. It detracts from the character and quality of life in the neighborhood. That alone is enough to deny this project. We're shoehorning in anything that we can. Every time there's an area that can be developed, the developers want to develop it. What are we doing? I recommend denying this transmittal until infrastructure catches up. Y'all really need to do your due diligence and not overstretch the infrastructure. And we need some help from our elected officials to slow everything down. We have to leave the house 45 minutes to an hour earlier to get through traffic to the school. We need a realistic timeline for our schools and we don't have one. Our legislature Leaders have done a lot of benefits to developers, but they've abandoned our schools. Traffic is the major issue. Ellen Avery Smith, the attorney representing the developer, sought to make one thing clear. What we're talking about today is a large-scale, comprehensive plan amendment application for an age-restricted community, which will include zero school-age children. I think that's the most important thing to point out right now. She added, This project brings, and the reason we presented it together again, for all four of these applications, plus the concurrency agreements to come, is $11.5 million of public benefit for roads for significant roadway improvements for the transportation network that will tie into the future Outer Beltway that is coming faster than all of us will expect. The project was ultimately approved in a vote 3-1 to one with Commissioner Krista Joseph casting the sole no vote. Commissioner Roy Alamo was absent. This local news is a service of your hometown Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. The Florida Speaker of the House and State Representative for St. John's County discusses legislation saving money for parents. Paul Ryder says lawmakers passed a bill eliminating sales tax on baby and child necessities. We say, well, look, you know, while children are a blessing, not a burden, they cost more when you come back from the hospital, so we're going to say... No more sales taxes on baby formula, baby strollers, baby diapers, all those things that run up the cost of raising a a child. Legislators also made a change to the state's child medical insurance program. These kids that are on Medicaid, we have a kid care program that just charges them 10, 20 bucks a month for their health care. And then they make one extra dollar their parents do and they go up to $250 a kid. And so we had people that said, hey, can I sign an affidavit to turn down my job promotion so I can keep my kids health insurance? So to be pro-worker, pro-family, we said, no, we're going to chew that out so that you don't go from, you know, zero to 250. You, you kind of graduate from 50 to 75 to 100 kind of the income ladder and, and spread that out a little bit so you don't immediately lose your benefits. You can learn more about the program at floridakidcare.org. For St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Rich Petschke. St. John's Riverkeeper Lisa Reineman is saving the grass. Liz Ryan explains. Lisa spoke to me from her patrol boat, the Kingfisher. She and her crew are on a week-long eelgrass expedition. Eelgrass is the kidneys of the St. John's River as well as important fish habitat. When you don't have grass, you don't have bass, and you don't have good water quality. It's the lifeline of the St. John's River as well as all of its tributaries. Unfortunately, we've seen a significant die-off of eelgrass over the last five years, and we're out meeting with homeowners, meeting with anglers and scientists to determine what the root causes are of this die-off, and most importantly, what's a holistic solution to get our important eelgrass back. They're traveling down the river, visiting different sampling sites. This is our scouting tour to find find the best sites to gather scientific information as well as to meet with people. So we'll be posting information at our website. We'll also be posting a report of what we're seeing and what we're not seeing. And most importantly, what can we do right now and what do we need to do in the future to bring our grasses back? Algal blooms are one of the biggest causes of grass loss. How can you help? Using less or no fertilizer is really important. Making sure that they're not rinsing anything down the drain. If you'd like to help them monitor your section of the river, contact us for future tours, which we'll be doing quarterly. For updates on their expedition and to get river-friendly tips, go to stjohnsriverkeeper.org. For St. Augustine's Local Morning News, I'm Liz Ryan. And now you're up to date with St. Augustine's local morning news. I'm Rich Carroll.